um, uh, the Hollywood region. Superb place. Not, there's not a lot of ghost stories here, but what there is is very credible. We have a lot of eyewitness accounts for them, so uh, we're kind of looking forward to doing it. It's different from everywhere else because there's nothing, there is no history about this place at all. There's a lot of secrets here um, that may be uncovered, and if they are, I would be so amazed because um, there's some certain information that only I've been given, uh, and I only know a little bit of it, not all of it. Um, so if that comes out, that'll be very interesting. We've just arrived and um, this is a fascinating place. It's where all the old Hollywood legends used to come and visit. Um, from what I've heard, Humphrey Bogart, Clark Gable, Charlie Chaplin, Robert Lowell, now the old one ever got their signatures. Uh, who else? Buster Keaton. Marilyn Monroe apparently was presented here two years in a row. But uh, it's a great place to fall. I just wonder what secrets it's going to pull out for us. Over here, Carl and I have to actually view the programmes uh, that have been edited and we've just been watching um, Tyndale Farm Revisited and it's just moving. Really <laughs> so I'm really looking forward to tonight. It's quite a strange place. Um, it's very big and the sound really travels. I can hear um, some people downstairs talking and it sounds like it's upstairs. So that's something to be aware of later. I've never actually been to anywhere like this as far as I remember, um, so it's got some good history here and obviously it's nice to learn about the American history and all that kind of thing. So I'm looking forward to today, Richard Felix is in his element again, as he has been the whole time we've been in America. It was formed in, what, 1929? Started in 28, finished in 29, dedicated July 4th, 1929. As an ex-serviceman's, or not, not necessarily ex -serviceman's. A memorial to the, the dead who had died during World War I, of course, because yes. it was after World War yeah, I. Yeah. And as a clubhouse for, the, uh, for those people who were, were members here. To be a member, uh, if you were a star, you had to be an ex-military? Exactly, and have served during wartime. Gotcha. So I see. the people who were after wartime, after World War One, uh, Adolf Manju is the one that comes to mind. Um, you know, um, the World War One vets. There were very few of them that were stars. Course. But after yeah, World yeah. War Two and during the war years, that's when it became Lots a hangover for Hollywood. And uh, of course, all the members here: um, Ernest Borgnine, Aldo Ray, Morgan Woodward from Dallas, um, Clark Gable's a member here, yeah. Ronald Reagan's a member, Gene Autry. Gosh. Um, and they were all, of course, ex-servicemen. Ex-servicemen. Mickey Rooney, Red Buttons. Um, oh, yeah. And, of course, a lot of other people who were not as famous, but who still worked in the industry. But were ex-servicemen. Ex-servicemen, exactly. And had served in war. Yeah. And had served now, what about Jimmy time. Stewart? Because, I mean, I know for a fact that he, he served in England in the, in the 8th Air Force. I don't know why he never became a member, but he did. He was here, here, wasn't he? Oh, he came here several times uh, that I'm aware of, and of course he was the master of ceremonies for at least one of the studio nights when they would introduce their starlets here. It was called the Wampus Baby Stars, and they started that program in 1932, yeah. and they ended it in 1963. We're talking about Marilyn Monroe, Rosalind Russell, Rita Hayworth, Piper Laurie, Shirley Temple, uh, Rosalind <laughs> Russell, um, you know, the, uh, I've got a list of them somewhere. Yeah. They were all introduced to Hollywood. This was before they were famous. Yeah, of course. And Jimmy Stewart was famous, but he, they talked him into coming down. Uh, Catherine Grayson yeah. was with him that night. He was the master of ceremonies, and Catherine Grayson, Grayson was the person that handed them their um, their certificates. In that great hall down, in down the, there? In the auditorium. And, of course, they were all made honorary colonels oh, of the American Legion. It's a great place to do uh, some investigation purely because um, take away the activity, take away where we are. But it's very wet, rare that we get a whole area where we can put people that has no act, no um, activity, no information, um, and is almost soundproof. And that's where we've been able to have David while we've been doing these pieces. So we know there's no information being leaked. We're just going now on um, David Wells' uh, lit walk around. Very conscious walking around the sort of ambience, the sort of decor, and what sort of clues that could give away. So, quite interested to see how David would separate the clues that you would get from the cocktail bar, for example, and what you would actually get through mediumistically. Walking down the stairs, 
picked up on uh, an energy that had fallen and unfortunately died. Now we know that that is the case, and he picked it up on the exact same stairs where this guy fell. What I'm seeing now is the it's the vision of him lying there, and he's he's twisted, and it's almost like he's um, fading in a consciousness. But I'm trying to lift him, if you if you know what I mean. I'm trying to get beyond. I'm trying to lift it so I can get a direct link with him, mm. as opposed to the, the what I'm seeing event-wise. But because of the trauma attached to this spot or around this area, I think he's going to be lighter if we go further up. So, are you saying he had an accident here and survived, or he had an accident and died? He, he definitely died. He, he's crossed. And yeah, an accident. I don't, I don't see any hands, no, I don't no. feel pushed, no. nothing like that. It seems purely an accident. And David came out with his name, Marshall. We know his name was Marshall, Marshall White. David has come up with a surname, but it's come up with Marshall, which is a very unusual name. I just wanted to, you know, I made contact with uh, Marshall earlier. Uh, now, it, there was only a very brief message for you, and I hope it's significant for you. The first is a, an obvious thing that the spirit will always say is that they are fine. They'll always say that they are okay and they're happy, they're fine. But the second was a bit more specific and it, I think it was kind of along the lines of um, do what you have to do. You have to, you know, whatever you feel is right, you have to do. And, and that was what he said. He said he's watching you, which may I, I think you're probably aware of anyway. Mm -hmm. But um, it seems as if there was maybe a decision you have to take on a personal level or on a professional level. And he just simply said, do whatever you feel you have to do. Does that make any sense to you? It does. It's a lot of sense, actually. Good. I'm oh, sorry, I'm just getting a bit of, a bit of, um, a bit of face action with Marshall. <laughs> he's putting, he's like making me feel a bit funny. Um, let him, let him, let him. He, he, he's, he's, he's put it, it's almost like he's, I don't know why he's drawing attention to his face. An analogy of something, I don't know. It's like scratching his face. He's scratching his face. Yeah. He came up with the fact he, he was, he, well, he was doing this, was this side of his brain. Now he had Parkinson's disease, but he also had a blister. He only just found out a blister here, and he was constantly pouring the blister. So, you, you, you can't know that. That's something none of the crew knew. I didn't know it, Kieran didn't know it, none of the crew knew it. For David to go in there, not knowing anything, and to come straight up with that, all the crew are looking at each other thinking, and that, it's almost like he's scratching or just rubbing it, constantly rubbing it. I don't know if it's a habit he had or something, maybe we could ask. And he knew him, but, but something about his face, I don't know. Did he have any, um, like an allergy or something? Did he rub his face or anything like um, that? Marshall had Parkinson's disease. <gasps> oh, that's what that is. Oh, okay. Okay. Because he was doing, he seemed to like, you know, he's touching his face quite a lot. So he was doing it constantly. Right. Trying to, you know, adjust him. Right. Oh. Okay. Gosh, David, you really picked up on, on him. Interesting. Yeah. But, he's but he is around, which is nice. So and what you can do is just talk to him. So if you, if you feel for a second that he's there, you just say, as you would in life, just say, hi, how are you? You know, and then trust what you get back. Well, That's I'm that. a little taken aback by all of this, so I, you know, you know, I'm kind of emotional. I don't know. I mean, I've talked to Marshall a lot, mm -hmm. but, you know, he's never talked back, other than, you know, the feeling that he was here, you know, and taking mm -hmm. care of the place. Mm -hmm. I think for a lot of people, what they expect um, is to hear a voice. They expect him, you know, they expect it to be his voice, or they expect to see, or, or whatever. And in reality, it's the same for mediums. Very often, the voices we hear are actually if you like our own voice, we can t maybe tell the tenure, we can maybe say it's a foreign language. But what will happen with most people is they will get an answer and they will assume they made it up. Do you know what I mean? And the trick is not to do that. Yeah. The trick is to assume that actually whatever comes to you comes from him, not from, from you. 